We started Railvolution uh, back in the day when we were trying to figure out how to grow a light rail system uh, from a line. Thinking about what is outside the window. How do we engage the public? Um, over the years, uh, I have been so excited watching what Railvolution has done. No more than when we have here in Pittsburgh. I visited Pittsburgh first uh, in a livability context in 19... 97 at the invitation of the local AIA chapter and had a chance to tour and get a sense of the potential But I am stunned at how that potential has been realized how people have moved forward um, It gives me hope. I'm here to get my batteries Recharged the question I most often ask at home is doesn't it really suck being in Congress these days? <laughs> it does None of us would ever have envisioned the things that are happening now on so many different stages. But what encourages me is what you are doing around the country on the ground. Not necessarily giving up on the federal government, I hope, no disrespect to the mayor, but not waiting for the federal government. Proving the power of planning, of inclusion, of harnessing the forces of change to solve problems, not create new ones. This to me, as I look around the country, um, what is happening now has really exceeded my expectations. And I deeply appreciate, Dan, what Railvolution has done to try and weaponize these concepts, bring people together, encourage one another, build on success and diversity. You know what needs to be done and how to do it. You know, we need to price the curb and we need to curb the single occupant vehicle. We need to train people to walk and make it safe and inviting. We need to make the low tech and low cost options work and make them cool. We need to manage them and make them transparent, especially the technology platforms, Lyft, Uber, Airbnb, all the dockless bikes that kind of spring up out of the ground, um, car share, um, being able to use these in a creative way and not be run over by them. Because ultimately, we all will be partners. We must change how we do business. Our communities must not merely be staging areas where, long, where large commercial interests um, make money, literally at our expense. Business development and transportation can no longer be inflicted on a community. And I am really concerned as I see some of the continued efforts at racing to the bottom. We talk about it, we bemoan it, but we still are engaging in that process. Development must truly be sustainable with community members as partners. The question for the development community, uh, given the array, uh, the new array of subsidies that Congress just passed out, some two trillion dollars, the largest transfer of wealth in our nation's history, how much is enough? I've got a gentleman in Portland, a developer just blew me away two weeks ago as I was visiting with him, who talked about a housing project he's putting together and he's reserving one third of the units at about half market for social workers. Because he's not accepting any federal money, he can discriminate against lawyers and, and give a lower rate to social workers because he thinks that's important for the community and the long-term investment. Kevin, how did you do this? Well, he talked to some of his partners who agreed to take a slightly lower rate of return in order to make that pencil out. 
Now, is that raising expectations or lowering them? And do we have the potential, not just for an enlightened developer and some of his semi-altruistic partners, but for unions, for foundations, pension plans, can we use the leverage to broaden? You're, you're right, uh, Majestic, these are alive. <laughs> uh, it's part of how we're going to get the resources in a collaborative fashion. But we ought not to tiptoe around what we can do with the power of planning uh, and regulation. We need money invested on the ground. Now, part of it, uh, and I think needs to, our thinking needs to move beyond transportation. Healthcare needs to be a part of that equation. Uh, we are investing, uh, no greater example of how we invest in failure. Uh, we're dealing with people after the fact. We're not getting services to them up front. Uh, in some cases, people are writing prescriptions for healthy food, uh, exercise, being able to be involved with community development. Housing makes a difference in terms of health. Uh, people who are um, uh, leaving rehab, uh, being in supportive housing actually saves almost as much money in health care the next year as it would cost for the housing itself. And speaking of food, we continue to pay too much to the wrong people to grow the wrong food, the wrong places, the wrong way. Hmm. While we're taking away choices for farmers and ranchers, as well as consumers. We throw away 1,200 calories a day in this country. 42% of our food is wasted. Is there a way in a livable community to weave this into the discussion? about ways to capture value and improve the quality of life. The biggest federal infrastructure program, does anybody know what it is? You don't have to lift your cell phone. You don't have to Google. It's disaster relief. We're spending hundreds of billions of dollars as a result of storms, wildfires, flooding. What are we getting in exchange for hundreds of billions of dollars that impact the infrastructure and the lives and livelihood of millions of Americans? The rules of engagement are really stupid. We often put people back in harm's way without significantly improving the landscape and making, in some cases, it more likely that we'll be dealing with disasters in the future. I think we are spending enough on failure and dysfunction to be able to actually do it right. Well, what are we going to do about it? I've, I plead with you, don't give up on the federal government. Um, I just came off the campaign trail. Um, if you would have told me six months ago, I would be actually campaigning for two Democrats in Kansas that can be elected to Congress. I wouldn't have believed it. I'm cautiously optimistic that my team might be in charge, which I think will make a lot of what we're concerned about here easier. But regardless of the partisan makeup, what is most exciting is the quality of the men and women, mostly women, who are running for office. People who have other things they could do with their lives and devote a year or two on the campaign trail, but they are committed, they are energized, and they're going to add a quality to the deliberative process that we have not seen for years. It encourages me, to say the very least. But there are also opportunities, I think, to be able to harness what you're doing at the local level, taking a page out of what the mayor said, and leverage it up to federal policy, to be able to drive against that dysfunction. Now, I'm going to use an example. You may 
suggests that I'm smoking what I'm trying to legalize because I have spent a long time working on marijuana reform. But I think if you look at what has happened with this failed war on drugs, you see a path forward. For we have seen over 30 states in the last 21 years reject the failed war on drugs, fought out largely in black and brown neighborhoods, um, and despite an explicit federal prohibition and Jeff Sessions, they have acted to set up their own framework over 30 states have legalized some form of marijuana. They've changed, they have, <laughs> they have changed the perception. They are making what is medicine available to millions of people at less cost, with less danger of addiction. Actually, where they're doing that, there's fewer opioid deaths. And we're seeing a sea change within the next year or two, we will be treating marijuana the way we treat alcohol. States can do what they want to do as long as they have rules of the game, and life goes on. Well, can we take a page from the marijuana playbook for transportation and infrastructure? I am working, if my team controls, to establish a subcommittee for ways and means on transportation and infrastructure finance. Congress has been AWOL. You all know that it's been 24 years since we raised the gas tax. Did you know in the eight years that my Republican friends have been in charge of Congress, we've had 404 hearings on the Ways and Means Committee over those eight years. And we have had exactly five minutes of testimony from one witness about how to finance rebuilding and renewing America. One witness, five minutes, eight years. We can do better than that. My goal is to establish a subcommittee that would start having at least a hearing a week listening to what America wants. It's extraordinarily frustrating to me that we had no time to listen to the American Trucking Association, who pays almost half the bill for our highways, on their proposal to raise infrastructure. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce did me one better on my gas tax bill. They're proposing a 25 cent per gallon gas tax increase. They haven't had a chance to present that. My goal would be to deal with the 33 states in the last eight years that have put together bipartisan approaches to raise transportation investments. Let's invite the people from South Carolina to come in and explain how they were able to raise, to build a bipartisan coalition and pass it over the Republican governor's veto. And in Iowa and South Dakota and Utah, in state after state, people have figured it out. They're not waiting for the federal government, but they have put those pieces together. They ought to have a stage in Congress to make their case. Indeed, I think if we have a hearing every week listening to what America needs, what America wants, what America has done, and what America expects Congress to do to keep its end of the bargain, I literally think within a year the legislation would almost write itself. And I think we can return to that era where infrastructure was not partisan. Indeed, Republicans have their fingerprints on the Transcontinental Railroad with Abraham Lincoln. Eisenhower signed the National Defense Interstate Highway Act. 
These are things that don't need to be partisan. These are things I think that we could actually get Donald Trump to support. He's called for a trillion or a trillion and a half, depending on what side of the bed he got off in the morning. But he had no plan to do it. With your help, we can develop a plan, and I think the administration would accept it. We need to listen to what America wants, what it's done, provide the framework, and get on with business. In my humble opinion, you're going to have a better Congress that can work with you. You provide the staging area for the most important challenges the globe faces. In terms of transportation and pollution, water, energy, health, the 50 metropolitan areas of the United States and the large cities around the world, that's where it's happening. Railvolution is providing a blueprint, I think, for inclusion, for sharing stories, techniques, encouraging one another. We need you to help us translate that to the federal level over the course of the next 30 months because together, I think, we'll be successful. Or to quote uh, a politician of a couple years ago, what do you have to lose? I don't think much. And I look forward to being your partner in Congress so that we can achieve it. Thank you very much.